Well, let's talk about the budget. We're now joined by our political panel, Susan Smith, a longtime liberal communications staffer, now principal with the Blue Sky Strategy Group, Sean Murphy, former chief of staff to several conservative whips in the past, uh, and Melanie Riche, former director of communications to the NDP leader, Jagmeet Singh, who both are now principals with Ernst Cliff Strategies. So hello to the two of you and welcome to the program. Thank you. So listen, let's begin with the budget, obviously, because you, you have now these high-profile Canadians, a former Bank of Canada governor, two former Liberal finance ministers, essentially joining in on the criticism that we're hearing from the Conservative Party on this budget. How problematic is that for the government, Susan, as they try to sell this budget to Canadians? Well, it's very seldom that form, former finance ministers and say woohoo to any kind of budget. It, it doesn't happen a whole lot. And they have an outside perspective and the government has the inside perspective and they have the voters that they have to deal with and have to support. So I'm not surprised that that's the reaction from some of those folks. That's the perch from which they sit uh, and they speak, you know, to a certain extent from a, a certain constituency. but. The, the Prime Minister and the government are looking at the voters, they're looking at what they're hearing on a daily basis in terms of affordability, in terms of housing, in terms of millennials and Gen Xers, in terms of full school food programs, pharmacare, those kinds of things. So the Prime Minister and the, the Finance Minister have to respond to the needs of Canadians and that's what they did in the budget. Yeah, Sean, what do you say to that? Well, it's not great to, to have those comments coming from those people in particular. Let's remember, these aren't just any old Canadians. These aren't just cranks on Twitter. These are, like you mentioned, uh, the former governor of the Bank of Canada, who was appointed under uh, Prime Minister Chrétien, uh, the former finance minister for, for Prime Minister Chrétien, John Manley, and the former, former finance minister from just a couple years ago under this same government. Uh, so, you know, say what you will about maybe their records when they held those posts, uh, but you can't say that they don't have an important perspective on the economy. Me, and I think when they're speaking up and sounding the alarm, the government should be listening. Mm -hmm. Melanie, what do you say to that? Yeah, I think what we saw in the lead up to the budget is probably what was most concerning because before people had an opportunity to see what was in the budget, we kind of had some of that commentary um, the day of and in the days leading up to it. So that doesn't inspire much confidence. I would say to, to Susan's point, I think as a communication or sorry, as a communication perspective, um, people want to hear their governments talking about the things that they care about and that they worry about. So from a perspective of um, affordability, housing, etc., I think they heard that from their government this week. I think it's still too soon to tell whether or not the the commentary from folks won't influence that because it took the government so long to kind of say, hey, we hear you hear the things that we're talking about. Uh, but um, as it relates to how they're communicating to people, I think um, that commentary this, this week didn't really sway regular people at home. I wonder, though, if it does miss the moment. And, and to that, I want to, you know, the, the, the Angus Reid poll that came out before the budget was actually tabled, mm -hmm. which, which essentially, essentially found that nearly 60% of Canadians think it is time for government to, to, to cut back a little bit and, and to not spend so much. I, of course, there's ebb and flow in politics, and I'm wondering if this budget is actually speaking to the moment, as you say, answering the calls for investment, or whether or not it's completely missed it completely by, by, by not answering the call to, to be more judicious in how they spend their dollars. I, I think Canadians always like governments to spend responsibly. I mean, that's, that's nothing new, and that, that's a good thing. But I think what Canadians have been telling people, you know, polling for months and months and months now has been there's a housing issue, there's an affordability issue, there's a food security issue. So that is what the government responded to. So, you know, when you see a poll like that, you almost want to do it again right after the budget and say, would you like the government to cut back on the housing programs that it's putting in place for renters to inspire building and, and those kinds of things? I'd rather see the flip side rather than just would you like government to stop spending or spend less would you like them to cut this cut that cut that and that that makes a big difference and I think that's one of the things that's going to come home to roost a bit with Mr. Polyev down the road because he's got broad general s statements but sooner or later the, the the microscope's going to be on him about what he would do differently and what he would not spend money on. Mm -hmm. Sean? Well it turns out budgets don't balance themselves. And, yeah, and look, I was hopeful. right. I was hopeful, right? We heard I that thought, from Pierre Polyev, I thought, too. <laughs> I thought, you know, like they say, ninth time's a charm. But it turns out uh, this wasn't it. Um, the, the interest rates are very, still very high. Inflation is still high. Uh, and it's, it is hurting people and families and businesses across the country. And the Bank of Canada is factoring government spending into their decisions on those interest rates. Um, and in, even in this, this budget, we're finding out that the government's going to be spending $50 billion uh, just to service the debt um, going forward. That's more than uh, than they're going to be spending on health care next year. Um, so it's it's unsustainable. 
And I've even heard it described as not being worth the cost. <laughs> <laughs> Funny that. <laughs> no, yeah. Yeah. Um, well, you know, I think I think it's about choices, and I think we, what we saw this week from from Jigmeet Singh and from the NDP in response to exactly that question of Canadians asking us to be responsible with budgets is, well, you could have brought in measures that would have helped a little bit with with um, reducing costs as it relates to subsidies that go to, I say, oil corporations or other ways to to bring in revenues. Um, I'll go back to the question of did we miss the moment a little bit with the with the polling? I find that super interesting, and I think it would be interesting to see a few weeks from now what that polling says. I'll go back to the fall economic statement where people were starting to have to renew their mortgages and they were really feeling the crunch of whether or not they would be able to keep their homes and they were having those decisions uh, as a family. And with the fall economic statement, we had Minister Freeland saying, we're doing all these great things for you. And it felt like that totally missed the moment. So in comparison with this budget, it almost felt like, oh, maybe they're hearing us a little bit better. So while we see the polling say, you know, they're, they're, our people are concerned about um, the spending of this government, I also think they want to see the government act in their benefit. So it'll be interesting to see how that polling evolves um, in the next few weeks based on all of the things that the government has talked about as it relates to housing, affordability, dental care, etc. And to the question of um, the cutting question, I think we saw um, Pierre Pelliev have to answer these questions on Patrice Roy this week on, on Radio Canada, where you know the question was, is dental care safe with you? And it was kind of made clear, no, it's not. So the more the opposition parties, or sorry, the more the Liberal government and the NDP is able to say, well, this is what this guy's going to cut, um, I think you'll also see that conversation balance out a little bit. Mm -hmm. you, you, you mentioned Pierre Polyev, you mentioned that not worth it, which which, <laughs> which, I, which I want to bring about, about onto the debate, because, you know, what's interesting is the economists are talking about productivity numbers and how this missed the, 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 the opportunity to actually address po uh, productivity. And that's not so much what we're hearing from the Conservatives. We're hearing that the lines that we've been hearing even before the budget, ax the tax, you know, not worth the cost. E is that a failure to, to Canadian debate, or is that smart strategy? From a pure comms perspective, I don't think there are more than 15 Canadians who can explain to you what productivity is and what the government would do to enhance it, you know, respectfully. But there are a whole lot of people who've heard Pierre Polyev say, ax the tax. So I think tactically that's what Mr. Polyev is doing. But I think where he is going to have a challenge is if he is a one-line repeat machine, um, people are going to get a bit frustrated with that. And as I said, the closer we get to the inevitable election day, people will be saying, well, are you going to cut this housing program? This is, I like the rent, the rental the opportunity to get a credit, uh, my credit rating with the rental stuff. My kids have dental care. My mom has dental care. There's food, uh, food lunches for my kids. So they'll, the scrutiny will be on Mr. Polyev. He, he's not going to be able to hide behind his slogans for a long time. I think people are getting a bit tired of that particular slogan. There's other things for people to think about. So he, he he's running out of rope on that particular thing, I think. What do you think, Sean? Smart strategy? Uh, I think so. I mean, I think the strategy you're seeing from the government in this particular budget is they're trying to change the channel on on the carbon tax uh, and focus on uh, uh, the capital gains tax, for instance, uh, which they claim is only going to impact 0.13% uh, of Canadians. And I think the Conservatives and Pierre Polyev are going to remain uh, focused on the tax that is affecting 100% of Canadians uh, in the carbon tax, uh, and they're 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 feeling it every time they they fill their car. They're getting the sticker shock every time they they go to the grocery store uh, or pay their heating bill in the winter. So yeah, as long as people are still being hit by that tax, he's going to keep talking about it. Okay, Melanie. Yeah, I, I, I kind of see um, the the closer that we get to the election, I think the more propositional he Pierre Poudiev needs to be. I think uh, his popularity isn't due to people liking him. His popularity is due to fatigue with the current government um, and, and wanting a change. So the closer that we get to an election, the more um, he'll need to communicate then what? What is his vision other than these slogans? What what? will those snow slogans actually do to benefit people? Because if he doesn't, I think the anger that people are feeling may not be the same anger that we're seeing in a year from now, depending on how we see interest rates change or inflation change. If people aren't feeling the same anger, Pierre will have to pivot um, and will need to be maybe not hopeful. I don't think that that's Pierre Poudiev's style, but have something to point to as a, as been what? If not this government, okay, we're going to 
cancel all these things that the government's doing, but but then what? How are you going to make my life better? And I think um, as we get closer to the election, Canadians are going to be paying particular or closer attention to that and will want those details. Okay. Uh, I hate to say it, but we're out of time, although I did want to ask a question because we know that the NDP is not uh, supporting the, the budget quite yet. They're holding right. off. Ha show of hands, who thinks the NDP is going to vote for the Liberals on this budget? <laughs> And that is our political panel for this week. <laughs> Susan Smith, Sean, and Melanie, thank you very much for the time. Thanks. <laughs>